Hey y'all, so tonight the second episode of American Crime Story, The Assassination of Gianni Versace comes on. I am so excited. I am so here for it. If you haven't started watching, I can't recommend highly enough. In fact, I just started reading Vulgar Favors by Maureen Orth. It's the book that the series is based off of and it's really good so far. I'm usually not into nonfiction, but this one has just drawn me in. I am really invested in the story though, and I was. I always found it so fascinating when it happened. Obviously, I was a kid, but I do have memories of that iconic photo with, with the blood dripping down those beautiful marble steps in Miami Beach. I know I'm on a tangent, but I just I need someone to talk about this with. Um, I will say I don't necessarily agree with the fact that Maureen Orth, the author, says that they met, they perhaps spent a night together partying, etc. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know if Versace would have like taken the time to hang out with this kid. Of course, this is my own personal opinion and just like what I believe about the story. I mean, I, I know nothing. I'm not in the inner circle, um, but I just don't. I don't see it. I don't feel it. I don't feel like perhaps Versace was like at a club, at a bar, making an appearance, hanging out with friends and Andrew Cunanan happened to show up there and maybe they met in passing or something like that, but I just cannot believe that it was anything more than that and that just spurred Cunanan's obsession with him. That's kind of how I picture it. That's just my personal opinion. Let me know what y'all think. So this is my January favorites video. Like I said, I'm just so hyped up on the show that I can't stop talking about it. In all honesty, this one's a little bit different because I was so sick for the first like week and a half, two weeks of the month. I just felt like I didn't really experience much this month or get to try out many things. It really kind of sucks to start not only your your new year, but your birthday not feeling well. I just feel like the new year kind of sets the tone and with my birthday being right at the beginning of the year, it does. It kind of like sets the tone for the month and for the year and I hated starting it out feeling so shitty, you know, it just kind of like puts you down right off the bat. Okay, so books. Like I said, I am currently reading Vulgar Favors by Maureen Orth. I'm actually only like 9% of the way through this book, which is actually kind of shocking to me because I'm on like chapter 20 or something. I guess this is a lot longer than I anticipated. I just finished, I don't know, two days ago, um, A Bridge Across the Ocean by Susan Messner, very, very um, popular historical fiction writer. A Bridge Across the Ocean was good. It was a cute historical fiction, but nothing that, and I've been saying this for a while, nothing that's just been amazing. I enjoyed it. Um, but I probably wouldn't ever pick it up again. It has a lot to do with the Queen Mary, the original Queen Mary. By the way, the Queen Mary II, the new Cunard ship, is like on my bucket list. I would love to do the transatlantic route on the QM2. That ship is just gorgeous. Then right before that, I read China Dolls by Lisa C. Set, you know, right around World War II, a little bit before going after, um, really good book. I did very much enjoy it. It's mostly about Asian American performers during the war, how so many of them were Japanese and they had to pretend that they were other nationalities or they would be captured and sent to these internment camps. Like that is one of the biggest blemishes on US history is how terrible we treated Japanese and Japanese Americans during World War II. Anyway, so it is kind of based on a true story. The Forbidden City um, in San Francisco's Chinatown was a incredibly iconic nightclub, dancing shows, and it was kind of pretty exploitative um, of their Asian ancestry and like the exoticness and sexualization of these women. Um, but for so many of them, it was like the only work they could find. They couldn't get deals, you know, they couldn't get like movie deals and so many things that white female performers could get. And then the only other book that I read this month was Chateau of Secrets by Melanie Dobson. Again, another historical fiction also set around World War II. Um, you know, French woman has this massive house from her father. You know, they're like French aristocracy and the Nazis like take it over as a place to like house their troops and have meetings and how she's working for the resistance and passing on info and trying to protect children. It's, um, it was a really, really good story. Everything I read was good and it was entertaining, um, but I am, I'm really enjoying Vulgar Favors so far. It is very intriguing. So before I get into the couple products that I wanted to mention, I do have a few podcasts that I have just been crazy about that I've discovered. 
I've been listening to a lot of podcasts recently, so much more than watching YouTube. My YouTube consumption is probably down like 95%. Just haven't been finding content. Like I am a little bit burnt out on beauty. I've got to admit it. There's only so many, I don't know, maybe I'm not like a true beauty addict or something like that because it does get a little bit redundant to me after a while. Anyway, I have found some podcasts that I am just crazy about and one of those is Slow Burn from Slate. It's all about Watergate and some of y'all are probably like, Watergate? Are you serious? This one is fascinating because all I know is like the bare bones story of Watergate and Nixon. This gets into it. The first episode is about Martha Mitchell who was kind of like a whistleblower. She was married to one of the high ups in Nixon's cabinet. I can't remember what his title was, um, but she was like abducted and assaulted um, because she knew what was going on during Watergate. She was held hostage for like five days. She was forcibly drugged um, by some like quack psychiatrist. And um, then they labeled her they labeled her like psychotic and alcoholic. She, she had a drinking problem and a drug problem and everything because she was being honest about what she knew. And um, yeah, she really got like the shit end of the stick there. And she ended up dying before the 70s was out um, from cancer and that like iconic picture of the um, flower arrangement at her graveside that said Martha was right, you know, after all the details about Watergate came out um, and she was vindicated. Anyways, it's, it's a really great podcast. I find it really interesting, personally. And I have been listening to Still Watching Versace. Um, it's by Vanity Fair's Vanity Fair podcast. And they're kind of following up watching and reading vulgar favors at the same time as watching American Crime Story and then kind of talk about the episodes afterwards. It kind of like fills my need to talk about this with someone else. By the way, I really want to see I, Tanya. I know it's been out, you know, for like a month now, but I want to see it so bad. I just haven't made it to the theater yet. I'm trying to get my mom to go with me, but if you've seen it, let me know if you like it. Now, this first product is a little bit interesting. I picked up the Glossier U fragrance. So this perfume, I think it's like 1.7 ounces. Yep. And it was 60 bucks even. So it's not cheap, but I had $64 in store credit from people using my link, um, which just gives me store credit. It's like, I think it's 10% off your first order and then $10 back in store credit for me. I don't get cash or anything, just store credit. Anyway, so I had the 60 some odd dollars sitting there for like, I think it's been there for like four months since the last time I bought anything from Glossier because nothing new had really come out that I was interested in. And I've been looking at this, it's been out for a few months and it's like, like you can't smell it anywhere. Who knows if I'll like it or not. But after reading the reviews and the notes, I thought I'd take a chance on it. And if I didn't like it, I was just spending store credit anyways. So luckily, I actually do really, really like this scent, but it's interesting. It is very different. And the day I got it, I sprayed it on myself. I loved it. I sprayed it on my mom and it smelled disgusting on her. Just like right off the bat, it smelled horrible. It smelled like she had sprayed on like a bottle of white shoulders that expired 10 years ago. Like it was disgusting on her. But on me, what it smells like to me, at least, is like what my hair smells like right after I get out of the shower. Like it smells like fresh, clean skin or fresh, clean hair. And then it has kind of like an earthiness to it as well. I really like it. It's very, very different. And obviously it goes very different on a lot of people. So who knows? But if you end up like getting a sample of it, because um, if you do place a Glossier order, they, they do have free samples of it. You may want to test it out, but people either seem to like just adore it. It's their favorite perfume ever, or they despise it. Now, I think this is my only makeup item because I really haven't been playing with anything new. I just saw this at the store and I got sucked in and I picked it up. It's one of the new-ish Wet n Wild highlighters in Blossom Glow. I nearly picked up this one and Golden Flower Crown, but I don't need a gold highlight, but I may pick it up again this summer. <laughs> But after I decluttered my Dior highlighter um, because it wasn't cruelty free, I was told that this was a dupe. I completely agree. It is right on. I mean, it looks damn near identical um, and so much more affordable too. I do have it on today, although a little bit subtle and I did layer it with my Laura Geller baked highlighter in uh, French vanilla. But I gotta say, Wet n Wild makes some damn good highlighters. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love that they have four shades that will work for every single skin tone there is. This next product, I'm pretty sure I mentioned last month, my Sunday Riley UFO oil, but I just picked up the big 
honking size of it. And I love it so much and it is continuing to work so well for my skin. My skin is looking better than it has in ages. Um, when I don't use it, when I try to use something else, I, you know, I break out and so I go back to this and it heals it up really quickly. It's just so hard to find acne treatment products that don't just dry the ever-loving shit out of your skin. That's not why I have acne. I'm not like a 13 year old who's like, cells are just going crazy producing oil. That's not my problem. And so I love that this has like acne treatment in it, but it also has oils nourishing to the skin so it doesn't dry you out too bad. I'm so far a really big fan of it. But earlier in the month, I did get a gift card and I decided to pick up some skincare from The Ordinary because it's just so incredibly hyped up. Everyone says it's amazing and it's so affordable that I thought like, well, maybe I'll give it a try. Maybe something out of this line will work just as well for me and it's like a tenth of the price. Now I've only picked up three items. I didn't buy one of everything from the entire line. Um, I bought one of the moisturizers, which is the Natural Moisturizing Factor plus HA, Hyaluronic Acid. And then I bought two serums, the uh, Buffet, which is the most expensive serum they have. It's only like 14 bucks though. That's what I've been using during the day. And then the um, Niacinamide and Zinc at night. And they do deserve some more time. I'm not gonna like be too critical of them just yet, but I have got to say, I am not impressed right off the bat. I'm not seeing any difference, which maybe that needs more time, fine, okay. But I'm just not liking the texture of them. Those serums are so thick and sticky. To me, a serum is something that sinks into the skin and those don't, they sit on top, they are so incredibly sticky and it's really hard to build makeup on top of them. You know, night, whatever, I still don't like sticky serums because I, I like a nice texture on my skin, um, but it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, trying to use like Buffet in the morning and then try to put makeup over it, it's just so sticky and not in like a good primer way. And to be honest with you, I, I don't like sticky primers. I like primers that make my skin feel very smooth. And the moisturizer just really, it feels thick, it feels cheap, it's chunky, and I don't feel like it sinks into the skin anytime I try to put any, you know, primer, foundation, anything on top of it, it pills up really, really bad. Even just using it on its own, I can see it like chunked up and like my baby fuzz on my cheeks and stuff. I'm just not overly impressed with it. Again, as far as results go, like if I start seeing some really good results, you know, it'll be worth putting up with some texture issues that I'm not crazy about. But I just gotta say right off the bat, I'm not getting the hype of why these products are so highly regarded. I'm not seeing it. Yes, the prices are amazing. I completely agree, but I'm just not seeing it yet. And let's finish up with a few new hair care products. I've actually gone a little bit crazy. Uh, not really, I ran out of pretty much everything I already had. So I picked up some Verb products, but in the meantime, I had picked up an It's a Tin conditioner just from the grocery store. And I love this brand. I love It's a Tin. Everything I've tried from them, I adore, but they're so freaking expensive for the drugstore. Anyway, so the It's a Tin, I think this is the Silk Express Miracle Silk Conditioner. It's freaking awesome. I wash my hair, well I only wash my hair once a week, but I do it when I first get into the shower and then I let this sit on my head while I shave, while I wash my face, while I exfoliate my body. I mean, I do everything. So it's really getting to soak in there really well for probably like 20 minutes. Um, and then I do like a cool water rinse. It makes my hair look so shiny. I mean, I think my hair looks pretty shiny today and this is like fourth day hair or something like that. And then just recently, I stopped into Sephora and I picked up the Ghost Shampoo and Ghost Conditioner from Verb. I love Verb. They are one of my favorite hair care brands. In fact, they're cheaper than It's a Tin and they're sold at Sephora. But most of all, I really like supporting my home state businesses. They're based out of Austin. I would love, absolutely love to go visit that salon and let them cut my hair. Anyway, so when I ran out of my last bottle of shampoo, I knew I wanted to pick this up. Yeah, this one. Um, so I've had it on my loves list for a while and it's like I finally run out, go to purchase it and it was out of stock on Sephora. So I'm like, eh, not that big of a deal. There's other shampoos in this house I can use. Um, but then I was at Kendra Scott at the mall, well the town center, it's not technically a mall, whatever, it's one of those open air malls. Anyway, so I was there picking up my B-Day gift, you know, cause they do half off of one item, I believe, on your birth or during your birth month. And so I was there and then Sephora is right across the street. And I was walking out and I was like, don't, don't even look, 
don't look over at Sephora, you don't need anything over there, and my feet just like turned and walked me into the store. And I was doing a really good job about not buying anything, nothing jumped out at me until I got to the hair care section. I was like, there's a shampoo and conditioner I wanted to buy, um, and these big bottles are only 16 bucks, so not the cheapest shampoo and conditioner ever, but it's not that crazy expensive either. All right, y'all, well, that's pretty much everything I had to cover. I am gonna hop on Uber Eats and be lazy and stay in all night. But as always with these videos, I wanna know what you've been up to this last month. How, how did your new year go? And have you been you know, succeeding in any of your new year's goals? I would love to know, or if you have any good fails like me, make me feel better. I always love to hear those too. Anyway, I'll see y'all in my next video. Don't ever forget, it is perfectly okay to just be small town famous. Love y'all, bye.